Hey folks, Ben from Sony's today with a dual zone fridge from Mike Coleman. This is the CCP69 or what Mike Coleman call the Traveler. This is a dual zone fridge with tons of capacity, perfect if you want to take your ice cream and keep your drinks cold at the same time. And the CCP69 dual zone weighs in a bit under 30 kilos, 29.4 kilos and measures at about 73 centimetres in length this way, about 45 or just under 46 centimetres in width and about 56 centimetres in height. It's made from a combination of polypropylene, which is this grey material on top here and the black bumpers on the sides. There's all this heavy duty polypropylene. Same as on the bottom here, polypropylene there and there. And then in between these two is a metal panel. So it kind of combines the best of both materials. This metal panel is useful for the optional battery pack, which I'll show you more on shortly. Do a bit of a tour around the outside for you. I'll come back to this end shortly because that's the control panel end on the back here. Not much to see. There is an indent here. The free lid is currently hinging from this side here. Um, but if you flip the lid around, which I'll show you shortly, you get your hand under there to open it. Metal panel, polypropylene on the bottom, vent for the compressor. Flicking it around to this end here. It's quite a tall fridge. Excuse me while I struggle. Same deal, polypropylene, spring-loaded handle here, and these are flush handles, so if you don't use them, you don't have to take them off, they can just sit there and do nothing. Um, but they come out, you can use this to anchor the fridge as well, and that's a metal um, handle in the middle there. Metal panel through here, polypro on the bottom with a 12 and 24 volt, volt port at this end here, so you can power it through your 12 volt system or 24 volt system from this end. Furthermore, to this side, not much to see there. Panel at the top, this has got the lid, or the latch to the lid on this side here, which is reversible, show you in a sec. Metal panel, polypro at the bottom, with the vent for the compressor. And then this end here is the business end where most of the magic happens. Just move this across, so another spring-loaded handle here. Under each of these handles too, there is a bottle opener. This features on both ends, so handy little feature. Metal panel through the middle here. Polypro on the bottom with a control panel. We'll go into all of that shortly. And then at the bottom here is all our power up options. So 240 volt AC input here. There's just one of those guys, but then next to that is another 12 and 24 volt input. So one of these features at both ends of the fridge. Next to that, a little three amp USB output so you can charge devices from there. And below that, it's an override switch. When this is in the uh, switched onto normal use here, the fridge is in normal operation. So whatever you do with the control panel depicts what the fridge will do, the temperature inside, etc., etc. If you flick this across to an emergency override, it bypasses all the control panel features. So if there is a fault here, flick that to emergency override. The compressor will now run at full capacity, probably freeze everything inside the fridge, but at least it won't all go warm and start to smell. We're going to go a little bit more into the control panel shortly and how to use that, but I want to show you the top of the fridge and inside first. This lid, a uh, nice thick heavy duty lid, you can stand on this, sit on this if you like. It's got a little rubber panel in the, on the top here, so if you do put stuff on top, it's not going to slide off too easily. Now this lid's actually reversible. They're all stainless steel components in this fridge here. So these hinges at the back here are all stainless steel. The stainless steel screws and everything. We've got this other hinge on the front here that allows us to reverse this lid. So to pop this off, you've got to be fairly firm with it. We just push this backwards and it pops out of place. So there's a little sort of spring load hinge in a spring loaded sorry hinge in there that holds it in place so we can now flip that around put it back down on this side here we just make sure it lines up give it a tap so it locks in and the lid is now reversed so easy way to change the lid direction pop it off again flip it back the other way and we're back to where we started so nice and easy way to reverse the hinge there's a nice thick lid. There's about six centimetres roughly of insulation throughout the whole fridge here. So nice thick um, polyurethane insulation inside. So nice and efficient. And the lid's got this nice thick soft um, seal that runs around the top here. And that lays nice and flat against this flat edge here. And in underneath here is something that Mike Coleman don't really advertise, or well, they don't advertise at all. And they, they've got, it's a little pipe or something, I haven't actually seen it, but they use some byproduct from the compressor, which is the heat from the compressor to run around this edge here. Make sure that this just stays a little bit warmer than the fridge inside and stops the ice from freezing up or coming across on top of this, um, this lip here. What that means is that this seal is always sealed firmly against the fridge here, so you don't get any cold water, uh, cold air, sorry, escaping. Let me look inside the fridge now. We've got 96 litres of capacity. What they say is about 87, 375 mil cans. 
Measurement wise, uh, there's two depths. So at the deepest end here is about 43 centimeters from the bottom to the top. Then at the shallow end, about 25 centimeters from where this shelf is here above the compressor to the top here. Total dimensions from end to end is about 58 centimeters from end to end here and just under 33 centimeters this way. But you've got this divider here that divides the, the two sections. So you've got fridge, fridge and freezer. So from here to here, the width of this section here is about 17 centimeters. And then from here to here, the width is about 38 centimeters. So two different compartments that you can play with there. These are all removable, what's inside here. So this is a tool basket that fits in this end here, probably what you'd use for your freezer compartment. So that easily lifts in and out. You've got little tabs there so you can lift the basket in and out nice and easily. Then on this side here, you've got two more baskets. There's a top basket here that has this handy little feature that lifts up. So we can lift that up and lock that in place here and that gives us the full depth of the fridge there. And there is plenty of space to fit upright bottles in there, easily fit. Uh, that's a champagne bottle, 1.25 litre um, bottle, and I've got a 2 litre milk carton there, so you can fit them upright in that section there nice and easily. So that gives you a little bit of extra height in that section. If you don't want to use that, you can lock this down, fill that space up, lift this out independently of the one on the bottom, and then you've got this little basket in the bottom here as well, which also has these little indents, so you can lift that out nice and easily. Now, if you wanted, you could actually use this fridge as one large compartment by taking this divider out. This slides out. So it now becomes one full fridge or one full freezer. And I didn't actually mention before, I'm just gonna quickly put this tool basket back in that this is probably better using this side here as the freezer because it has this lid that goes on top there. So that then seals this section in here to make that much colder. So back to taking this out, you can use it as a complete fridge or freezer. The only downside to that is that these baskets, you've still sort of got this little bit of a wasted space in here. These baskets now slide around a little bit because you haven't got that divider in the middle to stop that from moving around so I guess the only way, reason you want to take this out is if you need that full length for something otherwise you might as well leave it in there and if you want to use the whole thing as a fridge then you just set both sides to, to a fridge temperature or if you want to use it all as a freezer set both sides to the freezer temperature last couple of features I'll show you inside is at the bottom here you can see there's all these little channels here so if you clean it out the water can run to this central point here and there's a bung that features in the bottom that fits nice and firmly that goes straight out to the bottom of the fridge so if you do need to clean it out the water can run out to the bottom of the fridge and then up at the end here above the compressor is an LED light as soon as it's plugged into the power that light goes on it stays on so you can see what's going on inside the fridge it only features at one end so you find that the freezer section up here might be a bit dark but you can, can see in the fridge section nice and easily at night now the fridges are efficient but when you become to a dual zone fridge like this if you are running it as a fridge and a freezer they do draw a little bit more power and this guy they state will draw about 2.9 amps per hour if you're running the fridge at about minus 15 uh, sorry the fridge at three degrees and the freezer at minus 15 and that's obviously going to vary a lot depending on how you've got the freezer set and the compressor is Mike Hallman's own compressor which is in here and if I look in here now I can see a blue compressor inside there that's Mike Hallman's own compressor it's been developed with years and years of history and knowledge in the portable fridge market it's a variable speed compressor it's reliable and it makes these fridges really efficient particularly when you're running them as a fridge alone and coming back around the front here i want to talk about the power options before i go any further though i'll just quickly mention that if you want to anchor this down use the handles with some straps under there to tie it down there are feet in the bottom of the fridge but they're not specifically or not specified as anchor points so you could probably screw the feet out but i think you're probably best relying on the handle to hold it secure particularly if you're using it in a four wheel drive now you get this little box with your fridge that comes with your user manual inside and a couple of cables so you get a let me move some stuff out of the way here you get a 20 240 volt cable here and a 12 volt cable now the 12 volt cable has got both a cigarette lighter plug there and if we unscrew that it's also got the dual pin plug there which is a more secure way to mount it in your car if you've got that available to you i'm going to plug it in now and power it up and show you how it works i've got another 240 volt cable here so i'm going to plug that straight in the fridge will beep and it'll go back into the last setting it was on when it was previously turned on so this was on when it was turned off at the power last so i'm just going to turn it off this has a memory so the last settings this was at is the settings it will load or start up at the next time you turn it on 
So now to turn it on, we press this button here. This all lights up. The LED light goes on inside the fridge as well. And there's a few things going on here, which I'll step through now. Firstly, the green light here indicates that the fridge is on and it's functioning as it should be. You might find that goes orange or flashes orange. There's a few different things that might do. Consult your user manual. That'll help you if you do get anything other than a green light there. Below that, it's off at the moment, but there is a blue turbo light that correlates with this button here. If we press this, that blue turbo light goes on. That then puts the compressor into sort of like overdrive. It's gonna run um, or draw more power and work harder to cool the fridge down quicker. Use that to bring the temperature down, particularly if it's in 240 volt, but if you, uh, or when it gets to temperature, turn the turbo mode off, otherwise it's gonna drain your battery much quicker. This is showing both temperatures inside each compartment. So we can see the little um, sign at the top here. This has got a little bit cut out there, which is showing the end of the fridge where that shelf is that sits above the compressor. So this is the zone that's closest to the control panel. And this is the zone at the other end of the fridge, furthest away from the control panel, because it doesn't have the little cut out there. So at the moment it's 15 degrees inside this compartment, 22 degrees inside that compartment. To change these settings, we use this button here. We press it once, this is now flashing. We can change what that set to. So they're both set to minus 18 degrees at the moment. If I scroll up, I'm gonna set this to fridge degrees. So let's say that's five degrees. It'll flash a few times and then go back, or it'll go back to the internal temperature. So it's set to 15, uh, set to five degrees, but it's 15 degrees in there currently. To set this side here, I do two presses, so that's flashing, I press again. Now this side flashes and I'm gonna make that even colder. So this will go from about 10 degrees to, to minus 22 degrees for both compartment here. That'll flash and then go to the set mode. So I've now got that, it's gonna cool down to minus 22 degrees. This one's going to five degrees, but at the moment it's 15 and 22. Now to access all the different settings, all we do is keep pressing this button here. It scrolls through all the settings. So one press does this side, two press does this side. Three press change gives us the option to change between Celsius and Fahrenheit. We use the up down buttons here to scroll between those two. So I'm gonna leave it on Celsius. It'll keep flashing, then it'll go back to the internal temperature. Four presses, one, two, three, four presses. Now goes to the battery setting mode. So there's high, medium, and low settings here. Now your user manual tells you what voltages they cut out at. I'm gonna leave it on low. It's a battery protection feature, so it doesn't completely drain your battery and the fridge will cut out when your battery reaches that specified temperature. Like I said, consult your user manual on that one. Now we're up to, I think, five presses, three, four, five. Now it's Bluetooth on and off. Now there's a Bluetooth app you can download to your Android or Apple phone that allows you to control the fridge without wires. So while you're sitting in the front of the car, you can control, your passenger can control your fridge or change the fridge settings, monitor the fridge, or you can do it from inside the campsite. So you don't need to come back to the control panel to do that all the time. Now to connect the fridge to your Bluetooth app, we use these two buttons together. So I hold down on them at the same time and it then goes to open. So open means I can use my phone to scan for this item. So I go to my phone, I click on Bluetooth, it finds the device and then I connect. Close means I use the QR code, which is the sticker on here, and you get another one of these in the box that comes with it. Set that to close, scan this, and it will use the QR code to connect your mobile device to your fridge. One last feature I want to show you on the control panel here, and it's not something Mike Coleman advertised, and that's a factory calibration setting that when it leaves the factory, they calibrate it so that the temperature inside the fridge is the same as what the control panel shows here. There can be variances through manufacturing, might be a bit of extra glue that throws the, the sensor inside out a little bit. If you want to get really picky, you can enter a factory calibration mode by holding down on these two buttons at the same time. And we'll then jump into this mode here. You can scroll between these two with this button here. So I'll just take note of these because it's going to switch off in a second. I'll explain what they mean. So this side here is factory, calib factory calibrated to five or minus five. So five degrees below. This one is three degrees above. Now what that means, if we talk about the minus five um, side, the, the display that was on this side, is that the temperature sensor that's in the fridge after it was manufactured, they tested it, ran it, had a factory calibrated temperature gauge inside and they found that the sensor was measuring the temperature at five degrees above what it actually was according to the calibrated gauge that they used inside. So we can force that gauge to be five degrees below so it is accurate. So you can use your own temperature gauge if you want to test it every now and then and you've got that ability in these fridges to calibrate 
both sides of the fridge so that the temperature that's reading out on that control panel is always accurate. And that's pretty much all the features of the Mike Horman CCP69 dual zone fridge or what they call the Traveller. You can get a insulated cover for it that goes over the top, offers a little bit more protection, a bit of uh, storage space in there as well, and also helps with the efficiency a little bit with the fridge. And the other feature that Mike Corwin currently have, and this technology is always developing, is this power pack here. And the simple design or the pure design of Mike Corwin makes these really compatible because they've got these magnets on the back and we can put this, attach this on the side here, on any side that we want. I can put it on this end here if I like. What that allows us to do is use this um, to power the fridge independently of the vehicle. It's got ports in the end here. It's basically an enormous power pack. You get a cable that runs from here to our 12 or 24 volt port there. We put this on the end here, the cable runs from here to here and the fridge then becomes completely independent of the vehicle. So we can power this in the car while we're driving places or while we're in the campsite, we can leave this powered up. But if we want to do a bit of a walk somewhere or go have a picnic away from the car and want to take the fridge with us, you can attach this on the side, run it for a good number of hours externally to the car, bring it back and then charge everything back off your solar rear car when you're back in the campsite. That is the Mike Horman CCP69 dual zone fridge. Perfect fridge for family camping. If you've got the space to store it, it's efficient and it's got a really neat design that makes it easy to store in a vehicle, caravan, trailer, wherever you want to put it. You can check them out online at snowies.com.au where you'll find them at our lowest prices every day. If you do have any questions though, please let us know down in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel. We'll send you all of the latest information and check out some other Mike Horman fridges like this one down here.